We're going to start a recording because we got a few last stitch people coming in. Okay. Muy bien. Y buenos días, buenos días. Y feliz, feliz día de muertos. Happy day of the dead. We're going to have a little tidbit on that later. <laughs> uh, it's not quite yet. That's coming up. That's coming up the next couple of days. But uh, a good little thing to explain it, which will be kind of fun. Okay. Um, hoy vamos a practicar con complementos. We're going to uh, practice with complements, and that means objects. And today I want the emphasis to be more on direct object and the pronouns that step in. But, but if there is any other question about those indirect object pronouns and about verbs that act like gustar, and I'll, I'll pop this in so that you know which ones I'm talking about. You know, there are these, um, yeah, these ones that we did last week, right? Um, if there are any questions about those kinds of verbs uh, and that you need as a follow-up, a tie-it-up kind of thing, um, now it's time to do that. You can I, I, I don't have a question about the verbs like gustar, but I want to just put a question on the table for when we get into the direct object pronouns. Okay. Which is just at some point, show us an example of a sentence that will have both a direct object pronoun um, and and an indirect object pronoun. Okay. Because I I not I haven't a, I haven't got a, even a good guess like which which goes where. Okay. Uh, like you know like I um. And that does happen. I, yeah, I, I you know I did something or I I, I gave, gave it to I him. gave it to uh, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it to him. Uh, she she gave it to me. I I told it to them. Yeah, right. that's a thing. Um, you know, this will probably be a good lesson to tie that up with a little bit. There's only one little complicating factor in that, but we can do that. Gracias. Sí. Muy bien. Uh, buena pregunta. And the short answer, just as a preview to that, is when we use two object pronouns together, which we can do, um, the human being always comes first and then comes the thing. So to him, it, I said. <laughs> yeah. To us, it, he gave. Yeah. It'll be, they'll still be in front of the verb like you're used to, but it'll be indirect first. Me, that means the human being, right? Who gets that thing. And then the direct object and then the verb, yay. So that's the short answer. But there's a little twist because of course it can't, it can't all be easy. So there's one little twist that will complicate it. And we'll, we'll talk about that later in class today. Es buena pregunta, gracias. Okay. Muy bien. ¿Algo más o no? No, 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 no. Ok. Muy bien. Vamos a practicar con uh, complementos directos, direct objects. And these are uh, unlike the other objects, uh, unlike indirect objects, they usually talk, uh, uh, well, hmm. Unlike the other objects, they may talk about either people or things, okay? And unlike indirect objects, direct objects are specifically used to replace something. So we're going to kind of step through that. I had given you a video to watch, but we'll step through the basics before we turn to this to do some practice. So. The reason we have direct object pronouns 
is to avoid repeating the same noun over and over again, okay? It's a shortcut. Pronouns are little itty bitty short words, okay? And these are a shortcut <coughs> of words that step in for or stand in for the noun so you don't have to repeat it. And <clears throat> in most cases, not 100%, but in most cases, you have to know what the item is that you're talking about first, okay? Uh, but ejemplo, you would have to know you're talking about watch, like giving the watch to somebody, okay? Um, so, all right, uh, it can't just come out of the blue, you know? You never walk up to somebody and just say, hey, I have it, because what they'll look at you and say, well, what's it? <laughs> yeah, I know it. Well, what's it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that by itself is not helpful. You have to have, uh, in, in other words, a contextual understanding of what that item is. And then the pronoun's job is to step in and to stand in for that thing. And, and you know, where is those indirect object pronouns, the, the, you know, give something to him or to her, they get a lot of redundancy, those extra ah uh, phrases. That can't happen with directs. That cannot happen, okay? So, okay. So the similarity is that like indirect objects, direct objects receive action, okay? And you ask who or what question related to the verb, okay? <laughs> who do you see or what do you see, all right? Uh, object, uh, direct objects do not do the action. They receive the benefit uh, of whatever that action is. So if we've got a verb like see, uh, aquí tenemos veo, veo a muchas personas, I see lots of people, all right? Uh, if we take that verb, see, who do I see? People, I see them. So the way we shorten it to the word them is to say las, to stand in for personas, okay? Las veo. Veo a muchas personas, las veo. I see them, okay? If I subbed in, let's say I subbed in a couple of names here in the same one. Uh, um, uh, veo a Leonor y a Martín. Veo a Leonor y a Martín. If I wanted to see, I see them. Now I've got a male and a female, so I need to have a masculine word because it's just what that's that machismo thing, yeah? So instead of las to talk about a mixed group, it would have to become los, I see them, right? See? So this particular verb, veo, can be used with people or it can be used with things. The object might be a human being, it might be a thing. So I wanted to show you an example of a thing, direct object. You know, this is a human being set of direct objects, right? Uh, a direct object might be a person. If for indirect objects, those always wind up being people, always. But direct objects go either way, okay? People or things. So let's look at our thing, direct object example, right? Veo tu carro, oh, I see your car. Uh, we take that verb, see, who or what. Well, here it's not a who question, it's a what. What do I see? Uh, I see your car, car becomes it, and it has to become lo, okay? Lo veo, I see it. So what is challenging is you have to know that item, carro, <laughs> that you're talking about. And we need to know it gets the pronoun lo. Lo is the pronoun that stands in because it's the masculine singular pronoun. And it goes in front of the verb. Whereas that word order in English, that's a, the tough part for us. We say, I see it. And the it comes after the verb. They literally say it, I see, lo veo. And literally, 
in terms of brain function in the Spanish language, people are, are, yes, indeed, thinking about whatever that it item is before they talk about the verb. They are literally thinking about whatever gets the action right away so they can name it and put it in front of the verb. Okay, so yeah, that thought process is different and that's why it's tough for us. Our thought process is word order is reversed, right? So direct objects can be either people or things, whereas indirects are always people. And that redundant thing of using an ah plus the person phrase, you gotta nix that. The whole direct object has to disappear. The purpose for using these direct object pronouns is so that it completely stands in the place of the whole noun. And sometimes it might stand in uh, and take the place of a noun with a, uh, an adjective. It might actually, it might wipe out two words, one word, three or four words, okay? Um, uh, if I change this to veo tu nuevo carro, I see your new car, right? Uh, when you say I see it, literally even that word new goes away. So these object pronouns can wipe out, you know, a whole chunk of words that all hang together. Whatever talks about car, the tu part, the nuevo part, those all need to go away once I plug in the word it. And, you know, in English, you wouldn't say, I see it new. Yeah, right? All that stuff has to go away. So those little words exist to get rid of a longer string of words. And the object pronouns could again be people, so you might still hear me, te, and nos, but the hard ones for us to use are not so much the me, te, nos, they are the lo, the la, the los, the las, because you need to be thinking about gender, masculine, feminine, and number, singular, or plural. Okay, bien, bien, okay. And the other thing to keep in mind is we can only really use them with context, knowing what that item is first, right? Necesito los archivos, aquí los tienes, here you have them, okay? And we know because we're talking about files that when you say los tienes, you, oh, here they are, yeah? Um, you know that los is standing in for los archivos, right? Um, Vas a llamar a tu novia. No, la llamo más, más tarde. I'll call her later. Out of the blue, with no context, you generally don't walk up to somebody and just say, oh, I'll call him. It would be, well, who's him? <laughs> right? Is it mom, dad, the kids, the grandkids? Who is it? Who's the him? Right? So uh, we need to have that context there. All right? Uh, usually order. Order is a tough thing. Word order is the tough part of this. The, the indirect object pronouns usually in a regular sentence come before the verb. If I have a single verb, a verb acting by itself, it'll come before the verb. Of course, there are situations where they might attach, okay? Times when we can, but don't have to, we can attach them is uh, if you've got two verbs together and therefore you have an infinitive, right? Anytime we have an infinitive, we have the option, but you don't have to, not an obligation. We have mm. the option of putting that word lo or la or los or las, the direct object pronoun, putting it in front of the verb like usual, which means it's lo voy a llamar, right? Or voy a llamarlo, I'm gonna call him. So, I can go either way when I've got two verbs together. That can happen. Uh, I happen to think that this is a little more common, but this is very close to what you do in English, right? It, it goes back to that thing of kicking the it or the him or the her 
to the back of the sentence. So that thing of attaching it to the infinitive is sometimes easier for English speakers because it's closer to our English word order. Okay. The other situation where you might hear an object uh, pronoun attached is when you've got, again, two verbs working together, but this time a form of estar and an ando or yendo verb, meaning an ing, right? Is calling. Lo estoy llamando, mm -hmm. him I am calling, or estoy llamándolo. I have an option for the pronoun placement in those two situations. But notice they are when we have two verbs working together in some form. If it's a single verb all by its lonesome self, right? It's got to be the object pronoun in front of the verb. Si lo tengo. Yep, I've got it. Okay. It I have, literally. Okay. And the other odd thing is that if we've got an affirmative command, a go do it command, we don't get a choice of where that pronoun can go. Instead of being in front of the command, it will be tagged down to the end like a caboose on the train, okay? So this last uh, situation I've <laughs> highlighted is an affirmative command. A command is just where you tell somebody, do it, <coughs> call him. Say it, right? Clean it, okay? Um, so when you're telling somebody to do something, we have to attach to the end. Llámalo, call him, okay? Bien? Sí. Um, vale. Ooh, okay, let's do our parting thought later. Okay, um, any question up to this point so far? Si o no? No? Mm -hmm. No? Claro? Bien claro? Pretty clear? Sí. Okay. Sí. So let's take a look at these. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. Uy, un poquito más. Ah, sí. Okay. Uh, we're going to need an object pronoun here. And I'm going to type in real, real quickly what they are so that you've got uh, uh, a cheat sheet kind of right away handy in your visual. Of course, we're not going to use the os, but I put it in there because they use that in Spain. We don't practice it, but here, speaking to anybody from Latin America, they will not use that uh, os word, but they will all the time in Spain. Um, all right, so here are the little pronouns you're going to need to use. Uy, momentito. I didn't want that to happen. Okay, a ver. So you've got a little chart on the side that will help you out. And um, I want you to think about how you would answer these questions. How many times per week do you see your best friend, right? And normally when you answer that, you're gonna, not going to say, I see my best friend. You'll say, I see her or see him, yeah, mm -hmm. right? Uh, do you understand computing, meaning the whole topic of not, you know, not your computer. <laughs> Informatica is the thing about computers as a uh, mm, computing as a thing that is done, right? How all that stuff ties together, kind of the coding thing, programming, yeah. Uh, uh, do you understand computing? <laughs> coding. Uh, do, you, do you watch? We would probably say watch in this case, even though we use this usually in Spanish. Do you watch a lot of telenovelas? You know, those are soaps, right? <laughs> Soap operas. Uh, do you understand me? Uh, when are you going to call us? Uh, uh, are you helping the grandkids with their school homework? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you help your grandkids with their school homework? Uh, where are you putting the shoes? In the closet or near the door? Where do you put your shoes? In the closet or by the door? Uh, do you remember phone numbers? <laughs> I don't, okay. Uh, Tienes el correo, do you have the mail? Uh, do you, 
to have coffee every day. So I want you to, to uh, plug in, take out the, um, yeah, take out the underlined object and see if you can answer those questions. Um, and today, I think we're just gonna let people go in groups of two or three together and not worry too much about ability because, uh, you know, you're all at the same level with this is the first lesson. Oh, no, that's today. Okay. And I just need to adjust a couple extra little things. Oh, cositas, momentito, perdón. I'm sorry. I've got a couple things to. Still arrange here. Hillary, nice earrings, by the way. Yeah, they, oh! used to, they used to light up, <laughs> but no more. Those things only last uh, one. <laughs> one season. Is that all you get out of it? Yeah. Darn. Yeah. <laughs> Así es. So it is. Ah, uh, yeah. And. I should have looked up the word for jewelry. I could have just said me gusta to earrings. But I ah, me gustan, me gustan. Me gustan. Me gustan, sí. Uh, mm. Me gustan los pendientes, los arretes. Arretes are used for earrings. Me gustan los arretes. Uh, bien, and boy, my eyeballs are still not working. Why am I having a tough time with this? Okay, <laughs> I see because I need to move a couple of people over. And let me see if this is all evened out, pretty even here, bien. Okay, I'm gonna hit this button and you will see the questions in your breakout rooms. Um, Tomas, you can either hit join or just hang where you are, whichever you choose to do. Um, and let me get my share screen going here. Yeah, you know what? Hang on a quick minute here. I've got it. Ah, here we go. I was concerned my I had something blocking my screen there. Okay. And actually, Tomas, if you want to practice just with me, you can do that. Or you can just chill. Whichever you prefer to do. Gracias. And it's CJ. And so oh, I, CJ. I yes, I'm that's sorry. okay. No, Tom and I are back to back and I go, oh, she met me because the I think the Zoom account is like underneath oh. his name or whatever. But that's oh. so I'm going to play the other video like while they're in breakout. So okay. I'll go back and do I some of the homework. Do you want me to I can put you back in? No, I, I got the option to say not now. And that's good. So that I didn't want to go in. I'm the okay. one who emailed you. Yeah, not him. So. Oh, uh, OK. I'm sorry. OK. I thought that was nice. So is he in a breakout room? Did he get in a breakout room? No, he's not. Oh, Should I put okay. him in? Yeah, if you can. Okay. I'm going to do that. Throw him, throw wow, him in wow, somebody wow, else's wow, group. Wow, wow. All right. Thank you so much, Ooh, Marilyn. <laughs> I messed up on that one here. I thought I had my you know what together and I did not. Okay. Let me see what I can do. Ooh, this will be a little bit of figuring. Pobre Tomas. Wow. He's going to think I'm just ditching him. Man. Well, no, because he's got, he's behind me. And I was like, oh, she meant to do that for me. And I got a not now option. So that's what I did. Okay. But then he says he's not in a breakout group. So he didn't okay. get the thing. I'm going to see if I can bring this back. Ooh. Shoot. Now, of course. Now, of course. Hmm. I can't bring up my share button anymore because I used it. Oop. Oh, uh oh. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to screw no, him up. No, too, no, 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 no. 
that's that's on me. I should know how to do this again, but um, sadly, sometimes when now I I have I've done this before where I send people back in when you know they have to leave and they come back in. That's very very easy for me to send them in, but why is it not very easy for me to send them? I find this now. Why is not that not easy? Okay. Let's try hitting some buttons here and see if that happens. Oh, let's try a more. Mm, no. Or maybe is want... he in a room? Are you in a room by yourself? I oh, so he's, he's in a room by himself. He's in a room by himself. Can you? And I can't. Wow. Can you go back into the? Is there a way for you to click around to see if you can cancel or get out of your room or That's rejoin? That's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm going to see if Tom can hit something on his side. I think if he quits the meeting and rejoins. Oh, there he goes. So now oh. he's back in with us. So now you can re-establish okay. him in another. Let me see if maybe. I can. Yeah, I'm hoping. Hmm. Wow, it's not giving or me. Or we can pra he can practice with you right now. There I, we go. Do you want to practice with me? <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> okay, Thomas, go for it. So on the first one, I want to say. I don't see my best friend. So I thought it would be. I don't see him. Or I don't see him. Uh, no. Lo Simana. Well, it'll have to be lo, but lo has to be in front of the verb. It's got to so, be lo and then the word I see. So lo veo. Lo veo. Um, no lo veo. No, no, no lo veo. Yeah. Okay. And then that's it because that's the veo that's is the no I lo see. veo. Uh, no lo veo uh, cada semana. Sí. Uh, uh, no lo veo cada semana. I don't see him every week. Okay. No lo veo. Mm -hmm. And then the time period cada semana every week. Okay. Bien. Okay. Ahora, número dos. Entiendes la informática. Um, uh, la, la intendes, or I understand. And, uh, and it, the, the la is perfect. We need to change that entiendes into a form that talks about. Oh, la entiendo. Yeah. So it, and it's oh. la because it's information is female. Because Perfect. it's informatica, it's a feminine thing. Yeah, right. la entiendo. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Um, Do you watch a lot of soaps? Probably you don't. <laughs> cero, cero. Ninguna, uh, uh, not even one. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 they, ho. Uh, or... We have to have a not them, I see. No. Um, no, uh, no los veo. No los or los veos. Right? Las veo. Las, si Tomas. Tele, okay. Si Tomas. No las, las veo. No las veo. No las I veo. don't watch them. Exacto. Uh, do you understand me? Do you understand uh, me? Lo en, entiendo. I understand. Entiendo. It. Entiendo is great. Entiendo. I understand. Now, if you want to add into that, I, I understand, understand you. you. We've got to have a you. I understand. Uh, te, te lo entiendo. Te entiendo. No, no lo. Yeah. No. Te lo entiendo. is a yeah. duplicate. Okay. Te entiendo. Yeah. Now, why, why is that? Okay. Okay. Because sometimes sometimes we talk about a, a direct object being a human being in this case direct object is a human being do you understand me as opposed to you understand computing mm -hmm. yeah okay uh um see sí, te entiendo te entiendo okay uh oh cuando nos vas a llamar when are you going to call us oh this one is hard <laughs> Okay, so let's think. In English, 
when are you going to call us? If you responded to somebody and say, well, I'm going to call, call you tomorrow. You guys, right. We would say you guys. So which word out of that little chart has to become the you guys? I would say the los. It would be the los, right. Unless you're talking right. to an all-female group. It's more likely to be los. It could be less if it were an all-gal group. Okay, so we're going to have a less when we answer. And we're going to answer this. With, Llamo. I'm going to call, or you, or you might go straight into Yamo. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, you've got a couple Las Yamo mañana. Las Yamo mañana. Los Yamo mañana. Depende. Los, right? Depends los, on okay. who's in that group. Las Yamo uh, mañana. Los Yamo mañana. Or uh, Los voy a llamar. Los voy a llamar. Voy a llamar. Right? Los, los voy, voy. Los voy a llamar if you use the voy. Okay. Right? But you okay. can just go straight. It was a good instinct, CJ, to say, oh, just los llamo, I'll call you. Yeah, you can. But if you literally put the I'm going to call, it's voy a llamar, right? So los voy a llamar. Or we can reorder that to say voy a llamarlos. Right? Either is right. Okay. We had a tough one stuck in the middle. How about this one? Helping grandkids. Um, Ayudas a los nietos con la tarea de la escuela. Well, so you know you're going to use los for the since hey. it's the grandchildren. Muy bien. Um, and now um, we're going to say, I help them. But literally, we're going to say, them, I help. Uh, los TNA. Just, well, is that it? Or You don't have to have TNA, just mm. them, I help. Los, and now we're going to change ayudas into a yo form. Ayudas, ayuda. Oh. Ayuda. ayuda. Los ayudo. I Los, ayudo. Los ayudo. Los ayudo. Now, you're thinking, Tiene, um, if and you want to say, I, I them, have right? to, like, let's say you want to say, I have to help them. Mm -hmm. Los tengo que ayudar. I have to help them. Los tengo que. Okay. Si. Ayudar. Los tengo que ayudar. Yeah. Uh, okay. Con la tarea. Yeah. You, somebody might respond with that. Absolutely. They might. Um, but the important part is you're getting the los, and now we have a yo verb because I'm asking what you do, right? Uh, ¿Dónde pones los zapatos? Where do you put your shoes? Near the door or in your closet? I put them. But it's going to become them I put. Los. Oh, and this is a tough Pono? one. Pon Pon uh, well, normally you would poner? think it would be pono, but pono, uh, poner yeah. is one of those oddball verbs that is what we call a go verb because it gets a go for the yo form. Los ponio? pongo. Oh, pongo. 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 Los pongo. And then we tell the place. El Armaria. El Armaria. Ar In sí. El Armaria. Armario, sí, en oh, el yeah. armario. Oh, Los yeah. pongo en el armario. Los pongo en el armario. Uh, ok, bien. ¿Recuerdas los números de teléfono? Do you remember phone numbers? Sí. Wouldn't it be sí. Uh, los Ricardo. Re, Ricar, re, si, los Ricardo. Yeah, Ricardo. Recuerdo. 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 Los recuerdo. Si, I los remember recuerdo. them. Si, si, si. Exacto. Los recuerdo. Uh, no, no los recuerdo. Uh, no los recuerdo. Si. Uh, bien. Uh, Tienes el correo. Do you have the mail? What is that? Mail? Mail. Mm -hmm. 
C, Tango El Correo. Tango El Correo. And now we want to get the tango is right. The, it, the tango is correct. Oh, so we oh, want to get rid of Correo. Low. And we just want to say it. Exactly. Los? And what order now? Low. It's low, not low. Right. Oh, low. Right. Male si. is uh, just it. OK. Yeah. Lo tengo. Si. Lo tengo. Uh, lo, lo tengo. tengo. Lo tengo. Lo tengo. Right? Uh, Tomas café cada día? Do you have coffee every day? No. Don't. No, I don't have it. Is that what we want to say? Right? No, I don't I, have I, it. Yeah, and tomatoes. Or I just don't. Cake or drink. Yeah, or I don't. Or I just don't. Uh, so no. <laughs> I don't drink. Okay, I don't drink. Let, let's just look at the verb. No, tomo. No, tomo it, uh, uh, la. la, right? Oh, cafe. Because there's la. la cafe. El cafe. Oh, no. La. No, el. Com, no. No, el. No, no, low cafe. No lo. And cafe no is what we want to get rid of. So let's look at this. We want to get rid of cafe oh. altogether. It becomes uh, it, lo. Yeah. Right? Uh huh. To and yeah. Lo. Tomo. No, no lo tomo. Exacto. No lo tomo. No lo tomo. Bien. Gracias. Exacto. <laughs> well, I messed up my execution a little bit there after all that careful planning. <laughs> Pero sí. Ok. Uh, bien. Uh, bueno. Ok. This is uh, good. Thank I, you. No, está bien. Está bien. That's good. This is we we worked through all these. So notice we're really making two changes. Yeah. Because you're getting rid of the pronoun and you've also got to answer because if somebody says, are you going to call me? Uh, I'm going to call. You, you got yeah you've got the I'm gonna call part as well yeah mm -hmm. these become a little bit problematic um okay I'm gonna see if I can get this folks back wow you know my I can go I didn't update so, oh here we go here we go let's see if I can Well, when I cut my break up, let me just bring people back. Okay. Well, that update complicated things. Oh, it, it, I'm going to blame the update. Yeah. There you yeah. go. We'll be the only ones yeah, that know. You know I didn't we'll be... update. Yeah, I didn't update this morning. It's like, wow, the buttons are not coming up like they should. And like, and I'm looking, where's the button? Can you get everyone Donde back? Está el botón? <laughs> Donde está el botón? Where'd that button go? Guy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bien. Bien, 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 bien. Aquí vienen. Here they come. And there will be a lot of questions. And watch some of the questions that we had in our little group. You're going to get them too. Uh, okay. Everybody else will have had those same kind of questions too. Okay. Fantastico. Uh, well, Matt, Marilyn, Marilyn, number six on that list. Would be an interesting example of the both a direct and an indirect object pronoun can be used in the same sentence. Oh, technicamente no, technically not. No? Because no, because we've got a pesky little word that prevents us from doing that. And the pesky little word is con. Uh oh. Mm. Yeah. With the homework. Uh, and I'm in case you uh, don't know which word he is talking about. Let's pop that on the screen. So you couldn't I say was, you couldn't say I helped them with it. Uh, uh, well, with it. Oh, oh, the with is the problem. Huh? Uh, uh, yeah, the with the with the con is a problem. Yeah, but but in um, all the other other examples, uh, uh, like we were talking about earlier. I do something, you know, I do something to him 
Yeah. Two is two is okay, but not con. So here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. The con, the con here in numero seis, this is a little problematic thing. I can't use metenos lo la los las with con. Uh, con is a preposition. So I if I want to get rid of con la tarea de la escuela, let's say I want to get rid of that whole thing mm -hmm. and I want to put an it in there. It has to become this in the answer, con ella. No? Because of that little word con being a preposition, I have to use a prepositional pronoun, which is most of the time the same um, as what you already know as, sub know as subject pronouns. So uh, I could say it this way, uh, los ayudo, Los ayudo con ella. I help them with it. That it is coming uh, after the word with. So it has to turn into ella. Why is ella? Because con is a preposition. And, uh, oh, how far do I get into grammar speak? Well, I guess I cannot avoid it. There are all sorts of pronouns. Pronouns may be subjects. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. They can be objects, in which case, then you need to know is a direct object. And that's in the little list you've got there, the little teeny tiny chart. Or are they indirect or are they reflexive? We've even got those. And we even have prepositional pronouns. And prepositional pronouns are pronouns that come after a preposition. So prepositional pronouns are words like me, t, but after me and t, they go into what you know as subject pronouns. It goes into nosotros, el, ella, ellos, ellas. Yeah, because of so that the word. So ella on, is a to, 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 to replace the la tarea? Right, exacto. La tarea de la escuela, the school, homework. Right. Ella would replace it because tarea, even though it's not a human being, it's a feminine thing. And because it's after that word con, it would need a prepositional pronoun. The prepositional oh, pronouns wow. are not the same as these. They're not the same as these. So look, prepositional pronouns really aren't that tough. They are what you used when you had your ah phrases, because ah is a preposition, just like con is a preposition. So, a mi me gusta, right? Can't hmm. be a me me gusta, right? No. Uh, uh, ooh, a mi me gusta el helado. Wow, I really like ice cream. A mi me gusta el helado. That's why it has to be a mi me gusta el helado. Same reason as saying con ella. Con and a are prepositions mm -hmm. and they don't use the city bitty chart that you see off to the right. <laughs> yeah? mm -hmm. A mi me gusta, a nosotros nos gusta, a ti te gusta, a ti, but then a él, a ella. Yeah. Those little prepositions, they're stinkers. They are. They are stinkers. They they are stinkers. But yeah. But again, you would say he he is coming with me, not he is coming with I. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, we've got them too in English. We just don't think about them. Uh, so there they are. Es buena pregunta. That's a good question. Uh, and no, we can't just pair them up together like normally. We'll take a look at some of those. Um, okay. But it question the, si, so si. The, the the correct answer would be so uh see si, los ayudo los ayudo help. yeah i'm helping them i'm helping them with it oh con la tarea si los ayudo and notice these are kind of tough because not only not only are you subbing in that word los for a los nietos right mm. but 
you're also changing that verb from ayudas to ayudo, right? Mm -hmm. You're putting the words in the right order. There's a lot to do there. Mm -hmm. Really kind of three steps, okay? Uh, los ayudo, them I help. Los ayudo, them I help. Mm -hmm. Buena okay, any others here you had any questions about? Yes. Yeah, numero cinco. Numero cinco. Ah, mm -hmm. numero cinco. Oh, you get a choice in where that word goes. First of all, if I say in English, when are you going to call us? How would you answer me in English? When are you going to call us? We're going to call you. We're going to yeah, call you. We're going to call in you. English, but in English, we don't have a plural you. We might say you guys, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. If you lived in coal mining country in Pennsylvania, like my girlfriend, and my, <laughs> my, my little friend <laughs> when we were eight years old, use guys. Uh, yeah, which is like, wow, that really doesn't work. But, you know, they literally made you plural in the coal mining uh, area of Pennsylvania. Wow. It became use, use guys. Okay, so we're going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to call you guys. So. How, which word off that chart becomes you guys? Whoops. Los. Mm. Uh, it, it comes los, right. Unless los. it's an all gal group, right? If the you guys is okay. all women, then it becomes less, right? But You're right, Nora. Yeah. But when would you ever use the NOS in a response or? Nos in never, a response? Never, really? Yeah. Well, sure, you might. I just, well, we just couldn't think of it. Well, so, not not with that, because if you're answering a question, you're going to call, or when are you going to call us? Okay. I guess if it was I'm a command, call just call us. You. Okay. Um, Lavarnos. Yeah, oh, it, okay. it has to be, it has to be going from an ustedes question into a nosotros. It's a, yeah, no, you, you can very easily use a nos, but not in that case. Okay. Because if you're saying, I'm going to call you, you know, when are you going to call us? You don't respond, I'm going to call us. That's right. Yeah. The response is not, mm -hmm. I'm going to call us. It's, I'm going to call you guys. Yeah. So the nos switch flips over into los, right? So okay. now, now from here, knowing that you answer with a los pronoun, Okay, that's got to go in front of a verb. So the rest of it becomes los. Voy a llamar. Los voy a llamar. And then you give some kind of time, right? Because we've got a cuando. So los voy a llamar mañana. Los voy a llamar más tarde. Later. Los voy a llamar. El miércoles, on Wednesday. Uh, los voy a llamar mm, la próxima semana, next week. Okay. Sí, so, uh, so los and las mean both you guys and them. Right. Los can mean either them or you guys. It can. That is a little confusing. It is a little, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it is exactly. a little Exactly. Yeah. We've got to put the U in there, yeah? K is not the only and that way. that is just because the Latino countries don't want to use us? That is exactly right. Yes. Now, Crazy. And, and I had to work very hard to get used to using us because when I was a student, uh, everybody used us. And if you're in a group of young people, they're thinking, they will in Spain think you're some kind of weirdo if you don't say us, young people talking to each other. Because, you know, you walk in into the coffee bar and you see everybody, right? And it's us, you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, um, hmm. uh, yeah, but they hate that in Latin America. They absolutely hate that us word. It, 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 they just do. It's, oh, so if you are in Spain, then you're not using los boy a llamar, well, but you're using os boy a llamar. In, in, uh, with your friends, you'll use us all the time. Yes. Huh, with your friends. Okay. Because it's got to be the, the buddy group that's plural. Eso es, sí. Um, Cindy, sí. 
a question. Mm -hmm. um, I slightly remember this in, in the lesson, but if you have two verbs together, mm -hmm. we have voy and we have yamar, can you put the los at the end of yamar? You can. Well, what will that sound like? What will that sound like, Cindy? Voy, voy, voy a llamarlos. llamarlos. Voy a llamarlos. Voy a llamarlos. Uh -huh. I'm going to call you guys. Voy a llamarlos. Mm -hmm. And that mimics English word order. Yes. Voy mm -hmm. a llamarlos. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I spent my whole first year, I used to use always doing that. And then I would always hear people saying, los voy a llamar. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So people do ask, is one more common than the other? I think, personalmente, well, my own personal experiences, I hear people putting it in front more. But, but uh, you know, as surely as you say that, it's perfectly correct to do it that other way. So you may very well hear people switching that loss to the other position of uh, voy a llamarlos. Now, let's think further, uh, and I don't say this to confuse anybody, but this came up actually in our little practice group, and it was very valid. If somebody says, when are you going to call us? Many times, you might not say, I'm going to call you. You might just respond with, I'm calling you at nine, right? So... Technically, you can even answer this question with something like this. Los llamo. Los llamo. Los llamo. Because llamo can mean I'm going to near future. That present tense, llamo, mm -hmm. can mean near future. So technically, somebody might answer you with any of these. And of course, they'll flip a time period in, right? Mm. Los llamo, los llamo a las diez. Los llamo a las cinco. I'll call you guys at five. Los llamo a las cinco. Uh, right? But notice with this one, los llamo, I don't have that choice of put it in front or attach it to the verb. I don't have that choice. When the verb is by itself, a plain old sentence mm. stating a fact, it's got to be you guys, I'm calling. It's got to be. Okay? Mm -hmm. that, and that <coughs> is the tough part. Okay. Otra pregunta. Any other question about what you did with these? Um, numero siete. Numero siete. Donde pones los zapatos? So we wanted to say both. We wanted to say, okay, so we, we put it on both. So uh, oh, can we say places. los pongos ambos? Los pongo, uh, los pongo, los pongo, los los pongo, pongo ambos. En, en, en ambos? Ambos lugares. Ambos lugares. Yeah, you got to okay. add something to ambos, in ambos. Well, okay. you could say ambos, sí. You could just say ambos. Ambos lugares, ambos sitios, sí. Or... Sí, en los dos sitios, yeah. Ambos just means both. Yeah, bien. Okay. And that, and that one also okay. be a, a, a command, póngalos. Oh, a command, an order mm -hmm. means, well, it might be many different well, things. Yeah. If it's for, uh, if it's a familiar command, okay, like you tell the kids, yeah. You tell the kids to do it, put them by the door. Yeah. Uh huh. Then it becomes like this. Or you tell Ponlos. your husband. Pon you tell your husband. <laughs> yeah. Ponlos. Ponlos al lado de la puerta, por favor. <laughs> what? Ponlos. Por favor, por favor, please, por favor. See, si. ah, po yes, ponlos. If it's a friendly command. Ponlos al lado hmm. de la puerta. Put them next to the door. Ponlos al lado de la puerta o cerca de la puerta. Puerta. Bien. Ponlos. Hmm. Pon is uh, uh, one of the few oddball, um, irregular commands, but 
the formal command uh, is ponga. Ponga. Mm. Sounds like pongo, right? Mm -hmm. Sounds a lot like pongo. But poner is an ER verb. And instead of the go, 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 you have a ga, ga, ga. You have a switched vowel. Uh, um, commands are, they are the land of switched vowels. Switch up the vowel forms, okay? For commands. That's a, a, a different and, and somewhat more complex topic. Oh. Okay? And uh, maybe we actually will talk a little about that next week that'll be a good okay. time to talk about that okay ponlos. Yeah. okay uh see si, ponlos put them that's if it's to one person that you're friendly with so it's okay. like a so the pon itself is just like a shorten from pongo pon, is that what that well pon is it? what they call the tu command form that's affirmative oh yeah it's a tu command form Okay, and and I and I'll oh. I'll tell you next week what those are about because they're a good thing to know. They're a good thing mm. to know. Commands are somewhat complicated because I'm just going to say this as a thirty second thing. Commands are spoken to you, right? Mm. Yeah? yeah, we're not talking about them when we give a command. We're talking directly to some human being. So yeah. commands are either to to you or they're to usted, okay. you, or they're to ustedes, you, or if you're in Spain, they're to vosotros, you guys, yeah? So uh, uh, commands, ooh, and commands might be let's, mm -hmm. let's all of us. So technically you get these five things with commands, okay? Mm -hmm. And, um, and they'll take on different forms. So that's why we don't want to do that today because it'll be just turn your brain to, your brain to mush. It, it will, <laughs> it will. Just know that pun, pun is the friendly command and bonga is the formal command, okay? Bien, okay. Uh, vale, bueno, hay otras preguntas. Are there any other questions on any of these, what they should have been? Oh, I have a question. Sí, sí, dime. If you answer something no, do you have to say no twice? Um, generally, that's that's the way you're taught, but you might hear it once. Okay. But yeah, technically twice. Okay. So, por ejemplo, si, si respondo al número 10, si tomas mm. café cada día. No. If I want to say, no, I don't drink coffee at all, right? Uh, uh, no, no lo tomo. No. Uh, no lo tomo. Absolutely, somebody will understand what you're saying. Not no lo tomo, right? But technically, when they teach you the, the, the really formal way, ah, no, no lo tomo. Answering a question, they tell you double negative, right? No, no lo tomo. But if you forget the double no and you just responded, no lo tomo. No lo tomo nunca. No lo tomo nunca. I never drink it. Somebody absolutely understands what you mean. You've got what you absolutely need, the no in there. The no, no tomo. you say I don't like it, it's no me le, no me le gusta. Uh, oh, I don't like it is just no me gusta. Mm -hmm. We don't oh, we even don't need an it. <gasps> ah. We don't uh -huh. even need an it. That's the next thing we're going to talk about. How smart you are, Hillary, that you <laughs> asked that question. <laughs> well, I had I, it on my paper. I don't like it. I know in English you need an it. I don't like it. However, because that gustar is such an oddball thing and it really means to be pleasing, we don't need an it at all. No me gusta. It's not pleasing to me. It's it, not pleasing. It, it's it's not same. pleasing. And it's it, it's a, the same in the, you know, not in the negative. Me gusta. I like it. Right. I like 
exactly. Yeah, when you say I like it, it's just me gusta. So I don't like it, no me gusta. We don't even need an it. So your very, very smart question is part of this parting thought. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you never, yeah, sometimes you don't translate the word it at all. And I, I say this as a parting thought because it's not technically part of the lesson, but a lot of times we use the word it in English where no word at all will exist in Spanish. They will not translate that word it. So let's look at when that happens because I'm gonna tell you right now, this right here, I don't like it is exactly why. It in English is the object. But in this particular construction of gustar, it is really the subject. Mm -hmm. Because gustar doesn't mean like. Gustar means to be pleasing <laughs> or to give pleasure. So when you say it gives pleasure to me, it is really the subject. Oh, so let's go to the parting thought. La or la or you know, whichever it you're using, right? This can only be used if it is an object. El baño está muy sucio, lo limpio hoy. It I'll clean. I'm cleaning it. Yeah, I'm cleaning it. Uh, um, all right. Uh, it is not used at all when it is functioning as the subject of a sentence. And that is what happens with no me gusta. I don't like it. It is really in the Spanish side, the subject. All right, so here's what happens. Uh, a lot of times we don't translate it. Here's the situation when we don't. And what happens is you just get a verb and no word it. You just get the verb alone without the word it. So something like this, hace calor. Hace calor. In English, it is hot outside. Hace calor, literally, it makes heat. Yeah. But the hace, oh. the verb by itself, which is a third person singular, but you know, it's just the verb by itself. The it, idea is rolled into that verb and we never say the word it it's kind of how they drop all this it's kind of how they drop all the subjects anyway uh, yeah exactly yeah they do but in this case you really really have to sometimes right yeah. because we can't really say yeah well it's hot it's just as a or it's hard to fix the car um a lot of people want to say lo es difícil no, 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 no. Nobody says that. Yeah. Uh, it is hard. It is the subject of the sentence. So it is hard is just all wrapped up into that verb es. Es difícil. Es difícil arreglar el auto. Sí. Es fácil cocinar. It's easy to cook. Es fácil cocinar. Okay. Uh, um, uh, El papel está rico. Wow, it is really yummy. It is yummy is all wrapped up into that verb está. When it is the subject of the sentence. When it what do you is the, use the verb. Yeah. What do you use as star for rico? Um, this is a very, very, yeah, it's a very common thing. When somebody puts... Uh, okay, I'll, I'll give you the difference. It's kind of subtle, but I think you'll get this. If you want to just say, pastry is delicious. Pastry as a category of food, right? Pastry versus vegetables versus meat, yeah, versus plain old bread. Wow, pastry is... Pastry is uh, is delicious. Pastry is sweet. El pastel es dulce. Es dulce. El pastel es 
bueno, pastry is good. Uh, uh, but if I want to say it tastes a certain way, if if what I mean when I say that is that it tastes this way, like somebody just put it in front of me and I took a bite, then we use this that. <laughs> Uh, sure. <laughs> got that. You got it of, makes no sense to a French really speaker working. A French speaker is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? No, okay. No, no. But they do this all the time. Okay. Esta injects this idea of taste. It, uh, so it's not talking about pastry as a group. It's talking about this lovely little tidbit that's sitting on a plate in front of me and the way you fixed it and the way you served it to me wow this is great is that under emotion or condition uh it's a condition <laughs> it's a condition yes it is considered so that's a a condition. Oh, it boy. is considered a, okay let me give you another one here I'll, I'll riff on this just a bit uh uh the same thing happens with for example, the word pretty, right? Um, uh, you are taught uh, uh, when we we describe things. Uh, ah, la mujer, ah, ah, la chica es muy bonita. La chica es muy bonita. The girl is really pretty, really pretty, right? She is just pretty. And it's a description of how she actually physically looks. But people may often change that to, ooh, Ella está muy bonita. Está muy bonita. Well, wait, why not? Es muy bonita. Está muy bonita because she looks a certain way. There's something she did today that is a little bit different. She's got a little more punch. Hair mm. looks nicer. Makeup looks nicer. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something that looks different. <laughs> she looks really, wow, she looks... It injects the idea of looks a certain way or tastes a certain way. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That mm. is troublesome, isn't it? Yeah. It is, yeah. It is frustrating <laughs> and troublesome. It is. But but don't be surprised when people throw that at you because they may throw that at you. So they, they it sounds really bad to them. I mean, like, you know, it's offensive or no, they'll get they'll, they'll get the drift, they'll get mm. the drift, but it's not naturally the way they would express it if they were talking amongst mm. each other as native speakers. It'll always be esta. When you're talking about a dish that's served to you, it's sitting there in front of you, yeah? If I just wanna say hamburgers are delicious, las hamburguesas son deliciosas. Hamburgers in general, always, they're delicious, but Wow, this hamburger is like, you know, the king, it's like stacked and got all this stuff mm -hmm. on and you just put it in front of me. Then it becomes esta. La hamburguesa esta riquísima. Wow, this is super yummy. Because it tastes that way. It looks that way. It's got every kind of topping I could imagine on it. Yeah. Um, that is a funny thing there. Okay. Uh, let's. Ooh, a menos que tengan otra pregunta. Unless you got another question. Is there any other little question on what you did on your little exercise here? I want to talk a little bit about this uh, question that Mark brought up, which is a good question about what happens if I've got two, two object pronouns? Uh, it's really not that hard. You just need to know what order they come in because we do this quite often, right? Uh, um, if I have el cable, cable, right? And I'm giving it to her. I'm giving it to her. She needs to plug this into her computer. I'm giving it to her, right? We need the it. And we need the her person, both, right? So quite often we use double object pronouns a lot in English. Uh, and what is gonna happen is I can do that. And most of the, the rules are still the same. 
you know, you have to have it in front of an, uh, a verb. Okay, so the only thing you really need to know is if I've got uh, me or nos. Oh, and let's change this up a little bit. Uh, indirect objects ooh, have to come first. Indirect objects have to come first. That's the word, the general order. Indirect objects first, okay? And then direct objects. That's the order you need. Okay, so um, let me put a second in there so we know what we're doing. So here's our list. Ooh. Right? And, and they're going to look the same on the top tier here because they are the same. They're all the same. But these are just so that you've got them uh, straight in your head. <clears throat> OK. Yeah. OK, here we go. Uh, indirect object has to be the first one. Direct object has to be the second one. OK, so. Um, let's say I'm giving the cable to you, right? I'm giving the cable. Uh, doy uh, el cable uh, a ti, to you. Voy el cable, a doy el cable a ti. Nobody's ever going to say it that way. Nobody will ever, ever, ever say it that way. They will say it as... Te la doy. To you, it, I'm given. Or te lo, perdón. Te lo doy. El cable. I was thinking cuerda. <laughs> my brain was thinking cuerda. Sometimes this might be called a cord too, but pero es cable, but it's a cable. Cable. Uh, te lo doy. Te lo doy. So that's all it is. Te lo doy. Okay. Uh, the indirect human being first, the human being always comes first, and then the thing, and then your verb. That's, yeah. Uh, te lo voy a dar. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Uh, same rule, because I've got two verbs working together. I could say this as voy a, Dártelo. Voy a dártelo. Don't worry about the accent mark. You need that for writing, but in speaking, <sighs> it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Voy a dártelo. Okay, so I can tag the two of them on, but when I tag the two of them on, they have to be in that order of the human being oh, man. first and then the lo. Yeah. Voy a dártelo. Wow, I'm going to give it to you. But Te lo voy a dar, same exact thing, right? I can do that because I've got the two verb thing. So I can put them in front of boy. I can attach them to dar. Okay. Um, o, oh, por ejemplo, mamá. Mamá, ma, uh, mamá compra uh, dulces. Uh, para nosotros. Ooh. Okay, mom buys them for us. Mom buys them for us. Mom's buying them for us. Mama, we. Oui. Mama nos los compra. Nos los compra. There you go. Mama no lo, nos los compra. Okay? So, the human being comes first and then the thing, right? Nos los compra. Uh, I could, if I change dulces to uh, el regalo, gift, this would become lo, right? Nos lo compra. Okay? So, 
human being first, then the thing. Now, if I do that, I'm going to have a problem with this tier. OK. And the problem with this tier becomes mm, a phonetic problem. It becomes really and truly a phonetic ooh, problem. Uh, because here's what happens. I can have melo, mela, melo. Oh, uh, oui, I, pardon, wow, I've got that wrong. Sorry. Uh, melo, mela. Right? Uh, melos, melas. Telo, telos. Tela, telas. I can combine any of those. But, but a problem happens when I've got this. When I combine le or les, either one. So let's underline these two because they are indeed problematic. Ooh, I cannot underline them because I've got this enlarged, but I will underline them at some part. We'll put them in bold for right now. When I've got this situation, me, te, and nos are always gonna be very, very easy. But if I combine le and lo, uh, you can't le lo. <laughs> <laughs> You can't le lo. You can't do that because it's too many la 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 la. And remember the L really I ah, flips la 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 la. Oh, that is hard. That is hard. So with these two pronouns le and les, if I combine them with something from this direct object column, le and les has to totally go away. It turns into the word se. Oh. What? Mm. Yes. <laughs> See, así es. So it oh, is. Dear. But only when I combine them, people. When le stands alone, when les stands alone, no problem, right? Uh, le digo la verdad. I'm telling him the truth, right? Le digo la verdad. I'm telling her the truth. Les digo las noticias. I'm telling them the news. Les digo las noticias. I'm telling you guys the news. Les digo. I'm telling you. Les digo might be I'm telling you guys. Les digo might be I'm telling them, right? But when I combine le or les with another leadoff that's got an L, they say, we don't like that. So we're going to change the, that little word into say. Okay. That is kind of a stinker. All right. And it's not an S-E-S. Both of them are S-E. Uh, both of them are, uh, yes. So okay. in other words, say might mean to him. It might mean to her. It might mean to them. It might be to you, meaning it's the... Usted flavor of you. It might mean to you all, meaning ustedes. Yes, se might mean all of those things. All of those things. So let's look at that compra. Mama. Mom is buying. Uh, mama compra um, si el Xbox, because they probably would call it that. Um, um, a Jose, right? She's buying him the Xbox, okay? Uh, mama, se lo, oh, yeah, yeah, I get my palm down on my touchpad and it flips all over me. Se lo compra, se lo compra. And that se is not at all related to se levanta, se sienta. It's not that kind of se. Se has many, many, many functions in Spanish, and this is one of them. Se is because I cannot say, I cannot phrase this as 
Mamá me lo compra. I cannot do that. I cannot have, or le lo, perdón. Not lo, sino. Uh, I cannot le lo compra. Le los compra. Why? I can't. I can't do it's that. It's not hard. They, uh, <laughs> uh, they don't like it. They don't, and they don't do it. And, 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 and I will tell you, if you say le lo, people will look at you. Whoa. They're like, whoa, you get the look. Yeah. yeah. Uh, le they don't or like Lelo. Lelo. If I, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's okay to say Lola as a name. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not okay. Yeah, right. but it's not okay to say Celo or Lelo or Lelo. Lelos. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, se lo compra. Se lo compra is and 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 I might I might keep on because wow now. Say is super confusing because it might be one person, it might be right. Okay, so you probably know from context, but that thing of that we use just with le of having an a ah phrase to clarify becomes super important with this word say. Okay, because now, say can mean automatically, woo, even a greater variety of people. So tagging on a clarifying a ah phrase mm. when I use this will become mm, kind of an important thing to do. Okay, so, so then why bother using a pronoun? Why bother Could using a pronoun? say, mama lo compro a Jose? Uh, but people will very seldom say that. Okay. I, as a matter of fact, I mean, I never hear anybody say that. I never hear anybody. I, people always, they, they use the pronouns all the time. Yeah. Okay. So you won't hear mama lo compra a Jose. Okay. I mean, would somebody understand you? Yes. But they would think that's kind of weird. Why didn't, why didn't <laughs> they use say? I mean, it, mm -hmm. it just... What their expectation is to hear that word say. Okay. Yeah. Se lo compra. So uh, that's only when you're talking about doing something for somebody else. So, uh, uh, see, si, um, se lo, here's my lo, se lo doy a, se lo doy a mi compañera. Se lo doy a mi compañera. I give it to my like coworker, colleague. a mi colega. I'll use colega. Uh, se lo, lo, se lo doy, se lo doy a mi, co a, a mi colega. Okay. Um, se, se los, tengo dos cables aquí. Se los doy. Se los doy a mi colega. Se, lo, se los doy a mi colega. I give them. Se los doy. Okay. Mm. So yeah, that say thing, it, it's, it's a bugaboo. It's a kind of a nasty thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm. I would say don't worry about that too much for this reason. A lot of times, instead of using the se, you're going to be using the me or the te or the nos. Yeah? Yeah. A lot of times. Mm. If you're talking about a personal interaction, you want to know if they're giving something. Are you giving it to me or I'm giving this to you? Right? So the se only happens when I'm talking about giving it to somebody else. And it's not a personal interchange. Yeah? Um, yeah. So you don't need to worry too much about it, but just know that yes, it does happen. Okay. Uh, you, you, are you able to tell the difference by context? Yes, by context. Yes. So it's, how do you know that se is, is talking about like it's part of that instead of se lava las manos, right? Yeah. Um, and even then, I might say, oh, she's washing them, meaning she's washing her hands. Se las lava, se las lava. 
And then, then the se is reflexive because that's a reflexive verb. <laughs> but you know from context. You know from context mm -hmm. that that is the king always. It is the king of every situation. It is just the way it goes. Okay, bien. Uh, I wanted to stick in a little cultural thing, if we may. <laughs> puedo, puedo. Mm -hmm. May I? See? Sí? <laughs> bien. Okay. Uh, because I know some people won't necessarily... Um, you know, might be taking a break come next week when we start uh, a new session. So I want to leave with kind of a uncultural thing. Y aquí tenemos, ah, hoy, eh, hoy no es, ah, a veces se celebra Halloween. Some, some Hispanic families will celebrate Halloween. That is, 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 Oh, it is creeping up uh, on them. Some of them like it, some of them don't like it because it's uh, kind of an infringement on their cultural thing, but their thing comes after Halloween. So I wanna show you this little uh, explanation of what Dia de Muertos, Day of the Dead is because Day of the Dead is coming, mañana, tomorrow. And there's only one word I wanna clarify in this video and that is, she's gonna use the word Papa and Papa, uh, here is not going to be potato, it's going to be el papa. Uh, pa La papa is a potato, el papa is the pope. She's going to she's going to talk about a pope. So, okay, why do they have that? Sabías que el día de muertos es una mezcla, it's una a unión it's a entre union dos culturas between two cultures. De Este video para saber see this video to see why. Cuál. And I'll send you the link to this so you can watch it again. But Hola, soy Michelle y hoy te voy a hablar de el día Te voy a hablar, I'm going to talk to you. México. About Day of the Dead. Tal vez cuando piensas en el día when you think about de muertos, Day of the Dead, piensas you think en fiesta you think about a party. Yeah, they do. En pan de muerto. Uh, pan de muertos en is flores de cempasúchil. A sweet bread. Or, Pero ooh, yeah. la historia Miracles. del por qué celebramos. The story of why we celebrate. De muertos. Day of the Dead. Viene de años atrás. Comes from El years and years ago. de muertos es una fiesta que celebramos en México. It's a... Uh, in how do we celebrate in Mexico? In Central America. And in Central America. Pero down there too. In Mexico, celebramos mucho. Sobre todo en el centro. Above de all, Day of the Dead is celebrated in the center and actually de south too there. Estaban los Aztecas. This is where the Aztecas, Aztecas used to live years ago. Pensaban, pensaban que cuando the Aztecs tú, believed uh, that when you die, morías, tú podías ir you could a diferentes go lugares, to different places como after you die. And they have indigenous names for all these places. Para guerreros. There was one place for warriors embarazadas. and for pregnant women. Embarazadas. <laughs> Pero Go figure. But of course, otro lugar that happened al que tú in olden days podías ir era Tlolacán. Tlolacán. Tlolacán, Tlolacán and era the subtitles of the law. Lugar para personas ugh, muertas ugh, por agua. Agua. There was a place Otro for those who drowned. Lugar, cuando morías era Chichihualcuaco. Chichihualcuaco era el lugar para bebés. And there was a heaven, essentially, bebés. sort of, for cuando babies. Los bebés Children who died in infancy. Morían, iban a Chichihualcuaco. Había otro lugar para personas cuando uh, morían 
si tú no eras guerrero, If you were not a warrior, ir al Mictlán. You went si to Mictlán. No eras. If you were not in these special categories, average guy. Tú average podías guy. ir al Mictlán. You went to Mictlán. Si tú no eras bebé, bebé, tú podías ir al Mictlán. Si tú no habías uh, muerto uh, por agua, tú sí podías ir al Mictlán. En el Mictlán so, iban. Very interesting that the Aztec culture had like a different uh, uh, resting place for the dead, for babies, for pregnant women or warriors. And the warriors and the pregnant mm -hmm. ladies together, really interesting. And uh, people who drowned, yeah. And then like this place where everybody else goes, yeah, Mislan. But Dia de Muertos is really about your deceased loved ones coming back to see if you have remembered them. That's the essence of that. And there's yet another video we'll, uh, I'll send as a, a link for you guys to watch about that. Personas como tú o como yo. Pero todo esto cambió. All of this cambió changed. Cuando España, it changed España when the Spaniards came. Llegó a México. España Now you got llegó two religions a clashing. México en el siglo XVI. In the 16th century, the Spaniards España came. Llegó a México Spain arrived in Mexico. Siglo in the 16th y century. En España también tenían una fiesta llamada uh, Todos. Also los had a celebration santos. for the dead. Todos, to Todos Santos is all saints. And this is not just the Spaniards, but all of the Catholic religion in general has a celebration called All Saints Day. Okay, to celebrate those who have lived a good life and have passed on to the afterlife. And this idea of Todos los Santos, which is a holiday in the Catholic uh, uh, Church, uh, merged, blended with the Aztec tradition of rel uh, your deceased relatives, only your relatives coming back to see that their family has remembered them. Los santos. But the two merged. Estas dos fiestas se unieron, se mezclaron. They, y they mixed nació together. el Día de Muertos yeah, the dead en was born. México. Cuando España llegó a México, España no quitó, eliminó a los Dioses ah, well, de yes. So, yes, uh, of course, the proselytizing <laughs> that happened by force in, in most of these cases, uh, uh, coming in and bringing in the new religion, you know, this was sort of frowned upon, but this was such a strong tradition amongst the, in, in the Aztec culture. And, uh, you know, so many people would have been in those days of the 1600s still there would be many, many purely indigenous, uh, 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 you know, neighborhoods, purely uh, people who had no mixing yet with the Spaniards, okay? Because largely, there's a lot of, uh, you know, racial mixing from the intermarriage. But at that point in the 16th century, it had not happened totally yet. But of course, you know, it was very frowned upon because like, we don't want to make all you people good little Catholics. So, you know, they kind of put, tried to put the nicks on this, but it, it persisted to the point where they gave in a little to allow people to España mix the two to an extent. Los dioses de México. España hizo, creó iglesias católicas. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, they built a lot of Catholic churches, of México. course. And converted a lot of people, of el course. Papa ah, Urban here comes the segundo, Pope. Segundo, Urban the second. Que dijo que el día de muertos iba a ser el 
uno he said you can do your día you can do this but you got to do it first and second cambió of el día de muertos en México porque antes el día de muertos en México era en julio en julio oh, pero in Aztec culture it used to be in July II dijo mm. que sería en noviembre so the way they kind of made nice with the two cultures <laughs> yeah. uh um I, I question, was that a Jesuit thing? Because Jesuits were famous for doing this, for saying, let's adapt to the native cultures that we go in and proselytize. They were famous for that. Uh, uh, yeah, the idea was, well, we can't totally stamp this custom out because it's very, very ingrained, but we want them to become good little Catholics. What should we do? What should we do? Oh, perhaps we could combine the two. And perhaps we could, because really there's, nothing in the Catholic religion that would say you should not uh, pay homage to your deceased relatives. No, that's still, that's cool. So they basically moved the date to coincide with the Catholic Church's celebration of All Saints Day. Uh, but the Ademertos is more specific because it is a super, super family oriented super family oriented. Uh, it is a day to uh, make very elaborate altars. Uh, I'm going to uh, pull in some pictures that some friends of mine sent from uh, botanic gardens. You can see what they look like. The little altars in your house to welcome the spirits of your deceased family members to show your loved ones that you still love them and you still remember them, which is a, a very lovely tradition. So in spite of the fact that, you know, the whole skeleton theme is still a thing. It is not at all a gruesome sort of holiday. It is a day for remembering your family. Ah, we'll send you some nice pictures to see what that looks like. It's pretty cool. So, okay. Vale, bien? Gracias. Todo yes. bien? Okay. I'm not going to give any homework between then and now because we overlap technically into a new, yeah, a new session. Uh, pero okay. sí, gracias, gracias. Gracias. Okay. Okay. And maybe oh, it's just one week off, yeah? Uh, no, I don't think we have a week off. There's no week off? No. Just no. un momento. So we continue to... Noviembre 17. No, uh, we, no week off. We go straight in next week. Oh, okay. Eso es, sí, yes, no week off. Don't go away next week. <laughs> <laughs> Try not okay, to. Okay. And maybe we'll drag some of these pronouns in with some, and we'll work some uh, commands with that so we kind of demystify that. We didn't bring in our object today either. Oh, so. perdón. I'm so sorry. We can do that next week. We'll open that with next week. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Okay. See, I got to put a little note to myself so I don't forget about that. Okay. Bueno. Okay. Entonces, sí. Nos Gracias. vemos. Yes. Nos vemos. Gracias. Sí. Feliz Día de Muertos y todo eso, sí. Ok, hasta luego. Hasta, hasta luego. luego. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs>